Greetings Auto Subs, Video James, and today I'm going to be showing you how to catch Ultra Beasts number 1 and 3 in Pokemon Ultra Moon. Now, because I don't have Ultra Sun, I'm not going to be able to get all the Ultra Beasts, so the ones like Kartana and Buzzwool are actually off limits to me, as well as Blacephalon. But, I will be showing you how to get almost all of the other ones, except for Poipole, because you get that during the main story. So, everyone knows where to get that. But I will actually be showing you how to actually use the Ultra Wormhole Surfing to actually get the Ultra Beasts. And, as well as farming tactics. Now, the first thing you want to do before you do this is, it depends on your preferences, but if you haven't tried the Ultra Wormhole Surfing yet, basically, it runs on motion control, so, like, the system's gyroscope is basically how you fly around. And, for a lot of people, that sucks because the 3DS's gyroscope is terribly uncalibrated. So what you want to do is you want to go to Hauli City, and there will be this building right next to the Dimensional Research Lab, and you want to go in here, and this is actually the Game Freak building, so you want to go up to the second floor, and there will be a little room right on the right, and then this room will have a person in here who looks like they should belong to the Ether Foundation, and he will actually allow you to change the mode of Ultra Warp Ride from Circle Pad to Motion. So I'm going to actually set it to Circle Pad. And then we hear our lovely Lunala. And then now, basically, we just have to go ultra surfing. Right, so you see now that we're at the uh, altar, our, altar of the moon, that we have the ultra warp hole right here. So what you want to do is you want to make sure that you have a Necrozma on you. So you want to have either Dusk Mane Necrozma or Dawnwing's Necrozma. So as you can see right now, I have my Dawn Mane on me, my Dawn Mane with Automatize, Photon Geyser, Sun Steel Strike, and Earthquake, and we're actually going to be using that to go through the Ultra Wormhole, and you also want to make sure you have something that can inflict a status like Paralyze or Sleep, because that raises the catch rate, so for me, that is going to be my Tapu Koko with Thunder Wave, and then I also have Stakataka just to kind of be a tank and withstand hits, and then I have Naganado just to kind of take out the Ultra Beast if I want to, or if I so please. So, you also want to have a Synchronizer, but since I'm not really going to be keeping these ones for any sort of battle usage, and since you can get infinite amounts of the Ultra Beast through this method, I'm just going to go in and, and catch them. So, we're just going to be getting Nihilego and Faramosa today, so we're going to leap into the Ultra Wormhole, so we could go to the Reverse World, or we could go to Megapolis. So I'm going to try and click Return to Ultra Wormhole. And the Reverse World will actually take you to the world where you can get a Cosmog. Whereas the other one will take you back to Ultra Megalopolis where you can get Poipole. So it'll give you a quick tutorial here on how to do this. And it'll just be a bunch of crap you don't really need to know. Because most likely if you've played through the story you already know all this. But we're just going to ignore it and kind of go through now you can the farther you go the rarer pokemon will actually show up in the regular wormholes but we're not going to be worrying about the colored wormholes today we're just going to be trying to get the white wormholes so you can see we're sitting on lunala with our ultra recon suit so it actually turns out we don't need um to have them the crossbow on us it'll just actually always show up no matter what so that was kind of something i did not know now you want to avoid these little kind of balls of electricity because they slow you down and they kind of decrease your rarity chances. So you see you want to head in these wormholes that are white. We want to avoid all the color ones because the white wormholes will actually take you to the areas with the Ultra Beasts. So we actually have Pheromosa this time. Now Pheromosa is a little bit of a task to try and catch but it does have one of the prettier Ultra Wormhole zones. So you see we're in the glass desert right now. You arrived at a warp hole that was 694 light years away from where you were. Yes, so we are actually going to try and get this Necrozma. Did I just say Necro Pheromosa? I'm not going to pull a Pimp Knight. I'm not going to call this thing Primarina. Okay. So you see we got this rocky terrain here, but if we hop on our handy dandy Mudsdale, then we can just walk over this with no problem. Here. And then we want to just stop off right here, and we can push these blocks over with Machamp. So we want to just do this and get all of these blocks out of our way so that we're efficiently in a zone to where we can do whatever we need to. 
So we're going to push this block out of the way. And then we're also going to Mudsdale up here and see that there's nothing. And then we're also going to come back down and move this rock and get on Machamp again so that we actually can move the rock. And then we hop back on Mudsdale and kind of just jump back down here and move these rocks around so that they are no longer in our way. So we're going to just hop out and get on Machamp once more and just push this rock over. Now Machamp is actually going to be crucial to this environment because without him you kind of can't actually get to the Feromosa that is hiding here. Because there is one obstacle that no other Pokemon can tackle besides this Machamp. So we're going to push these rocks out of the way so that we can actually make it through here. Now Feromosa isn't actually the most common Ultra Beast, that would actually be Nihilego. That Nihilego's wormhole is actually the most common to show up. However, if you do get like one of the really weird really wait ugh, really rare wormholes then there's a high chance that it'll probably be a guzzlord if it has multiple rings around it so we're going to push this block over here to make a bridge now notice when you get over here we get this little platform that doesn't really seem like we can go anywhere that we get this little platform and it's like okay there's a thing here but machamp can actually push this giant rock out of the way so that it will fall down and create another bridge further on down the road and then we see Feromosa is hiding right over there. Right, so there's Feromosa. So now we're actually going to go ahead and capture that. I'm going to go on my Tauros and just go up here. Now there is a way to get more Beast Balls if you need to, which I will show you after this battle. So we're going to actually capture this Feromosa. I do have my um, Tapu Lele. Tapu Lele. Tapu Coco on me, just so that I can have the Paralyze, which will help especially with Feromosa because it is a fast sweeper in both stats. So since it's level 60, it's not going to be that much of an issue, and our stock attacker will be able to fairly tank it. So we're going to actually go for Thunder Wave just to Paralyze it, and it's going to actually get the Bug Buzz off, which could be a problem if we don't tank it. But thankfully Tapu Coco's got that Electric Fairy type, so we're not getting that damaged by Bug Buzz. Not to mention he's got decent special defense buff. So we're actually going to paralyze this, and then I'm going to actually go for a Dazzling Gleam, just to wear this down a small bit. I don't really want to overkill it, but if I end up killing it, then... Okay, sera, sera. So that would be how you catch Feromosa. Unfortunately, I managed to kill mine completely. So now we're going to actually go and try and find another Ultra Beast, but first I'm going to show you how to actually get more Ultra Balls. Right, so if after getting an Ultra Beast you do actually find yourself out of Beast Balls, or if you actually do need to obtain more of them, you can actually fly over to Ether Paradise and you will actually be able to buy them in this game, instead of having to do that kind of glitch in Sun and Moon where you had to take them all out of your bag and then get another one from the Ultra Recon lady, but if you actually go to this person right here inside of the Ether Paradise, literally right in front of the gate, then you can just talk to them, and they'll say, this is the ultimate in scientific progress we made manifest, we call it the Beast Ball, because it's you, I'll sell them to you for a low, low price, 1000 apiece. Now the reason they're 1000 apiece is actually because of the fact that we saved the Ether Paradise from Team Rainbow Rocket. So they are actually going to be super cheap for us. However, if you do try to use the Rotom power on it, it will actually not do any price changing. So you can buy 1 or 10. I'm going to actually buy 10 because I have the 55 Nuggets from beating Team Rainbow Rocket so I can get a lot of money later. And now we're actually going to go find another Ultra Beast. Right, so we're back at the Ultra Wormhole, so we are actually going to go in and we're going to go to another Ultra Beast zone. Now, I don't exactly know how soon it'll be until we get another Ultra Beast, because it's not really ever planned out, but we will just try and get one as soon as possible. So we got us on Lunala, and we're just going to fly off. Now, like I said, you do kind of want to avoid the uh, colored Ultra Wormholes, because those ones do not actually lead to an Ultra Beast, but rather they lead to more than likely a Legendary Pokemon. So you want to just avoid them, however... They do have a gravitational pull, so if you do end up hitting an energy ball right near one, you will actually end up getting sucked in due to the gravity of the Ultra Wormhole. 
Right, so we got another Ultra Wormhole right here, and we're going to go into it. Almost missed that one, but we actually got it this time. And you see, we actually have the Ultra Deep Sea, which is where Nihilego lies. So we're actually going to go ahead and try and find this. And we are going to actually attempt to capture this this time. I'm not going to try and one-shot it like I did last time. You've arrived at a warp hole that was 1,678 light years away from where you were. Yes. So I'm going to actually hop on Tor. Oh, I can't hop on Tauros. Okay. So we're just going to go over into the middle of the place. Now, this is basically the same as it was in Sun and Moon. So what you want to do is you want to just hop over to this little pedestal and sit on it. And then just like in Sun and Moon, Nihilego will float down and try to suck you in like a stupid Ultra Beast. So it is actually going to be trying to sit there and try and capture you. But we're going to capture it. So I'm going to actually go ahead and catch this thing. I will go for the Thunder Wave again just to try and get a little more damage. Um, its special defense is actually rising. So this one has higher special defense stat. Alright, so Tapu Koko is going to go for Thunder Wave. And I'm going to actually try and catch this, hopefully. Um, the Ultra Beasts are actually going to get one shot by Tapu Koko if I try and do anything. Because he is at level 74 since I used him to get through the Rainbow Rocket mission. Um, I wanted to use the Pokemon that I would used on my team through the story for Team Rainbow Rocket, but my Lantern that I had been using through the story actually did not really meet the standards because every Pokemon in Rainbow Rocket was like level 62 and above. So it is actually paralyzed now, meaning we are going to try and hurl a Beast Ball at it just to see how effective this is. I actually have 174 so we should not run out anytime soon. And we'll actually see if this catches it. I think it might actually catch it right away. Nope, so close. Okay. So I'm going to actually switch out into something else so that I can probably do a tiny little bit of damage. I might actually switch out into Stakataka since this thing is going for special moves. And it really only has rock and poison type moves. So we're going to actually switch out and go for Stakataka since he has the massive bulk. Now, Stakataka is also sort of a story event, but I will also show you where to catch it later on because it's basically the same way as Feramosa. So I'm going to actually go for Rock Blast and hope that it doesn't kill it. Um, it's going to go for Power Gem, meaning we are going to actually be slower than this thing still, which with Stakataka's speed, I wouldn't be surprised. So we are going to wear down the Nihilego a tiny bit and hopefully, yep, there we go, three times. So the electricity is going to go away, and we are actually going to be able to catch this now, because with the Beast Ball's in increased catch rate, this thing is just going to be insta-catch. Come on, three shakes. Yep, and there we go. So we've got ourselves a Nihilego. There we go. Right, now I might actually release this or do a GTS kind of trade bait for it depending on what nature it is. Um, I might keep it, I might not, I don't know. Like I said, it depends on the nature. It appeared in this world from an ultra wormhole. Nihilego appears to be the parasite that lives by feeding on people and Pokemon. So I'm not going to nickname it, I'm just going to keep it for now. And that is basically going to be how to catch Nihilego and Feramosa. Now I actually am lucky that I got both of those in this video. And we can see there's actually another hidden Nihilego sitting right over there. But I actually am lucky that I got both of those Ultra Beasts in this specific video. Just because there is a random chance that it could not be them and it could be one of the other seven. Right, so now I actually am going to show you how to catch Poi Pol and Stakataka. So I'm going to go to Ultra Megalopolis so that I can show you where to get Poi Pol. Now Poi Pol is actually attainable during the story. But I usually don't obtain it during the story unless I have a synchronizer if it's a gift Pokemon. So we're in Ultra Megalopolis right now. So basically what you want to do is after you beat Necrozma at the top of this tower, then the Ultra Recon people will actually be sitting up at the top waiting for you once you have defeated Necrozma. And they will be offering you to take Poi Pole with you so that you can actually have it and give it the love and praise it deserves. You do actually have the option of leaving it behind if you want to go and get like a synchronizer and come back and get it later. Um, I would honestly feel like that would be the better suggestion. But once you get up here and you defeat Ultra Necrozma after it's up here, they'll basically just be standing right here and they'll be like, oh, do you want to take this Poi Pole? And you'll be like, yeah, sure, what up, mate? 
Right, now with Stakataka, there is actually a specific place you want to capture it. Um, it is actually limited, I'm pretty sure, so I don't know how many of them you actually can capture. But what you want to do is you want to go over near Pony Breaker Coast, and you just want to fly Charizard over there, and he will take you to this spot. And then once you're over here, you can kind of just take a ride Pokemon to kind of just zip through this area. And kind of just disrespect the Tapu's calm music. And then just fly out over here. Now there will actually be this guy standing here when you go to catch Stakataka and you will have to actually fight him. But fortunately he is very easy to take down. So what you want to do is you want to actually come out onto Pony Grove into this little area right here. And Stakataka is actually hiding up here. Now I don't know if the limit is 3 but I have seen 3 of these Stakatakas. So we'll actually see if I can find any in this video. But when you come here with the Ultra Recon Squad and how Sakataka will actually be here and you have a chance to capture two of them. Um, unfortunately, when I played through the first time, I actually killed one of them and only caught one of them. But fortunately, I did get the nature I wanted for the first one. So it turned out to be a win-win. Right, so it doesn't seem like Sakataka is actually wanting to appear for me right now but when you do actually want to capture it this is the area that you can actually capture it I would recommend getting either a brave nature or a I think quiet nature because those natures seem to work out really well for Stakataka except for quiet because special attack raising doesn't really work for it since most of its attacks are physical but a speed lowering nature would actually work out very well for Stakataka especially if you give it a trick room move but anyway I'm going to leave this video here. That was how to catch Nihilego, Feramosa, Poipole, and Stakataka. Now, if you do want to actually evolve, evolve, evolve your Poipole into a Naganado like I have, you actually have to evolve it with the move Dragon Balls. So you see I have my Naganado right here. Now the way to actually achieve this is you have to teach it Dragon Pulse. Unfortunately, it is not a move that it can learn. And it is actually a move that it has already remembered before it was able to be obtained. So you get it at level 40, and unfortunately it does obtain Dragon Pulse at like level 35. So you do actually have to take it to the move relearner in the Pokemon League in order to actually obtain Naganado. But nevertheless, that is actually how you obtain it, and it is actually my favorite of the new Ultra Beasts. But anyway, that is going to actually be it for this video. Um, if you guys do want to see more of these, I will actually be doing more on the other Ultra Beasts, such as Celesteela and Zerkatry, as well as Guzzlord. By the way, Guzzlord's Ultra Zone is extremely dark and creepy. But anyway, I'm leaving this video here. If you guys liked it, you can slap the like button as always, and I will see all you beautiful people in the next video.